All right, hello YouTube, this is Ryan, and I'm a developer of AutoPad, and in this video, I am super excited to show you how to set up AutoPad version 1.9's new MIDI Actions feature. MIDI Actions allows you to really easily control exactly how AutoPad responds to MIDI, and I think people are gonna like this one. I put a lot of thought into how to make it powerful, but also easy to set up. So I've got AutoPad running on my iPad here, and I've got a little keyboard that I'm going to use to control AutoPad. We can control both live mode and set list mode. In this video, which is part one, I'm going to show you how to use note actions to control live mode. In part two, though, I'm going to show you how to use program change messages and these knobs to send CC messages as well. And we'll control setless mode for that one. Now, in order to connect your keyboard to your iPad or your iOS device, you're gonna need some kind of adapter. In my case, I have a USB-C to regular USB adapter, but if I have an iPhone or an older iPad, I'm going to need the lightning to USB adapter, which is sometimes called the camera connection kit. You're going to need your keyboard and you're going to need a cable to make the connection. So let me just get connected up here and I will see you in a second. Okay, so the keyboard is connected. The first time I connect a MIDI device to AutoPad, I'm going to need to go down here to the inputs and activate it. Now, you'll notice that my keyboard is already checked, and that's because I've already connected this device. So the first time you connect it, you will need to tap into the inputs and put a check mark by it. And after that, AutoPad's going to remember it the next time you launch the app, it'll automatically be activated. We want to make sure we have the MIDI receive switch enabled. And I've got this channel stepper here on the infinity symbol, which means that any channel, we're going to receive MIDI on that channel. Uh, we can filter it if we want to, but it's usually safe to leave it on the infinity symbol, which is omni mode, unless you have a specific reason. So let's pull up the MIDI Actions menu, and I'll just give you a quick overview. We have four live mode actions, four set list mode actions, and four engine parameter actions, which we can use like a CC controller, like a knob for. So I'm going to show you the live mode actions today, which are play pad, which we can play a pad in any key, and uh, stop pads, which will stop anything that's playing. We can toggle our click off and on, and we can select a sound. So I want to show you how to get these set up. One way to set them up is by just tapping on these buttons and adjusting these sliders. Now, this button here is determining the source for the action. It can be none, note, or program. And again, I'll show you how to use program change messages in the next video. So I'm going to set that to note. And then this slider, we can just tap and slide on it. We can hit the plus or the minus. Or we can even long press if we want to type in a value. But what if I don't really know what MIDI notes I'm sending? Well, we can hit this little black circle, which is the MIDI Learn or the MIDI Record button. And now I can just press the key that I want to go with the Play Pads action. So I'm going to hit MIDI Note 60, and you'll notice the number jumps, and it stops recording. And it's a really easy way to get these set up really fast. So I'll actually set that back to 48. And uh, also, if you just don't know what values your controller is sending. I'll do this again for setlist mode and the CC actions in the next video. But let's just keep in mind the actions that we have. 
So we have MIDI note 60 is playing pads. Now playing pads, since we actually want to be able to play a pad in any key, 60 is setting the lowest note. So this would be C, and then, you know, just like the keys up here, we can play a pad in any key using those notes. Stop pad is note 48. Note 49 is going to be toggling the click off and on. And then note 50 is going to be selecting a sound. We can select up to 10 sounds. So this would be the first sound, second sound, third sound, and so on as we go up. So let's go into live mode and just see that this works. All right, so we're in live mode and we're gonna use the live mode actions. Let's start a pad in D. Okay, let's turn on the click. Okay, let's toggle off the click. Let's change pads. And let's switch sounds. So this is the first sound second sound, third sound, and we hear that sound changing really nicely. And finally, let's just stop pads. We can either hit the last note we pressed or just hit our stop pads action. So really easy to set up and really easy to use. Let me show you uh, just a little bit more of how the select sound action works. So in version 1.9, AutoPad actually has a favorites feature and you can put sounds into the favorites just by tapping these circles. The blue ones are in the favorites. And the select sounds action is gonna select from the favorited sounds. If you have no favorited sounds, then you're gonna select from the factory sound bank. So you'll notice I press the third key and I got the third, so uh, the third sound in the favorites, which just happens to be resonant. So that's how MIDI Actions works on AutoPad 1.9. It's pretty much the same for the audio unit and pretty much the same for the Mac app, but I do have videos for those if you want to check it out. I am going to do part two where I show you how to use a pad controller that sends program changes, and also use the knobs to control things like AutoPad's filter. So thanks for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this, uh, check out the other videos in the playlist, subscribe to my channel. I'm documenting my progress as a developer, and I just wanna thank you for using AutoPad, and let me know what you're doing with it in the comments. It's super humbling to me to see AutoPad being used all around the world. And it just inspires me to keep making AutoPad better and keep adding features and keep making things that people can make music with. So have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.